All right, now we have another radical equation. This one's a little bit more complicated than what we've seen before. In this problem, I've got two radicals. So as we remember what the instructions said, it said to isolate a radical. That means to get one of these guys by itself. It doesn't really matter which one we pick. So I'm going to go ahead and get this first guy by himself. So I have the square root of x plus 5 is equal to 4 minus the square root of x minus 3. Now you may ask, well, why don't I just go ahead and square this side of the equation? Well, if I do that, not only will I square each of these individual radicals, but I also have to have that 2ab part, which gets very confusing and messy when I've got this set up. So now that I have this radical by itself, I'm going to apply that power property. So as I'm going to square each side, remember you're squaring each side of the equation, not each term. So this guy becomes x plus 5. Now, what you need to understand is that on the left side you're not squaring a binomial. You're squaring a square root. The square root is a group. So the square root hits the square root and you get just x plus 5. So before you could even think about squaring the binomial, it has already dissolved with the radical. Now over here, remember you, got, you have to know your special product. And you have to be able to see that the 4 is your A, and this whole guy right here is your B. So when I'm doing the special product, I get A squared, which is 16. I get B squared, and that guy goes here at the end, and that's plus X minus 3. But then you get 2AB. Remember that this is a 1 right here. So if I do 2 times 4 times negative 1 squared of x minus 3, that gives me the middle term. So 2 times 4 is 8 times negative 1, so that's negative 8 times the square root of x minus 3. So just so you guys see, that's 2 times 4 times negative square root of x minus 3. So I multiply all this together and that's where I get the negative 8. It's from that formula for squaring a binomial. Now, in this problem, it might do well for you to go ahead and combine like terms. On the right side, we've got 16 minus 3, so that's 13, minus 8 square roots of x minus 3, plus x. Then we need to get everything to one side, so I'm going to subtract x, subtract 13. I didn't, I didn't mean to say get everything to one side, I mean get this radical by itself. You see, we started with two radicals in the original problem. We applied the power property, now we only have one radical, so this is the guy we want to get by itself. So we have negative 8 is equal to negative 8 times the square root of x minus 3. So let's finish getting that radical by itself. And we can do that by dividing both sides by negative 8. So we have 1 is equal to the square root of x minus 3. So we have this radical isolated. Now we have to use the power property again. So once in this problem just was not good enough. We had to use it twice. So we get 1 is equal to x minus 3, and then naturally we have that 4 is equal to x. Now before I box this though, we do have to check our work. So let's do that over here. I need to check when I plug this guy in. Is that number plus 5 in that square root? plus that number minus 3, does that equal 4? Let's see, I'm saying my answer is 4. Let's check this out. I get the square root of 9 plus the square root of 1. Does that equal 4? I think it's pretty easy to see that 3 plus 1 does equal 4, which means that I can safely box my answer because I know that this guy is correct.